Every Nation family. It's Wednesday, the midpoint of our fast. As your hunger has been increasing, I know mine has, but so too has been my hunger to get in the Word and spend time with God. As we think about the subject of holiness, today we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as an evildoer, they will see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Now, at first glance, this seems like such a simple verse. There's no big vocabulary words. Keep your conduct honorable, your way of life, do good things. We all know kind of what honorable means. And the verse ends with good deeds. Surely we can think of those things that we do onto others and they'd want, we'd want them to do to us. And especially if we remove the middle phrase of this verse, this verse really just seems like external performance or external behavior. But that's just the what that Peter's talking about, honorable conduct and good deeds. He doesn't leave it at that. That middle phrase is super important because that tells us the why. So that is a phrase we see so often in New Testament letters, standing in for the why we do what we do. And it's so that when they speak against us as evildoers, they'll see our good deeds. And you might be thinking, well, why would someone speak against us as evildoers if our conduct is honorable and our deeds are good? But we have no further to look than the gospels to have an example of someone that happened to, and that was Jesus himself. For him, he was fully honorable and his good deeds were innumerable. But what was spoken against him was honestly almost incomprehensible. And for me, I will never, I mean, hopefully we'll be praying and healing the sick and breaking bread and feeding thousands and fellowshipping with the forsaken. But even if my deeds don't even come close to Jesus's, he was spoken against as an evil lure. I can expect it will happen to me too. But what Jesus did when he was literally called an evildoer, literally in the charges made against him by Pilate in John 18 verse 30, is that he did the ultimate good deed with the ultimate glorification of the Father when he laid down his life for the sins of you and me. So when we fully understand this verse, it's not about simply external behavior. It's about our representation externally of Christ's character. When people see or speak against us, let it be because they see the Jesus in us. But it's not just good deeds that this is all about because it's good deeds and glorifying God. The things we don't want to do to point people to ourselves. We, want, we don't want to say, oh, Jennifer, she's so great or you're such a great guy. No, just as Jesus' death on the cross pointed to the glory of God, our deeds too should not be about us, but they should be about our God. Interesting to note, the adjective honorable and the adjective good, those are words that describe nouns, uh, at the beginning and the end of this verse are actually the same word in the original language in Greek. And what this additionally tells me in this verse that our conduct can be and should be consistent. Whether or not someone speaks against you, whether or not you're complimented, your conduct your honorable conduct, your good deeds would have the same consistency just as our God has a consistency of his character. Holiness is visible in our good deeds, not because of us, but because of him. Not to point people to us, but to point people to him. And not to glorify us, but to glorify him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've shown us the why that we should have honorable conduct and good deeds, that we may be able to show your character to the world and that when they see what we do, they would glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Let our holiness be visible in our good deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless the rest of your fast.